You're still watching Ways. Now, composting day is a great opportunity to go green and help the environment. It is uh, common knowledge that you can compost garden and yard vegetations as well as kitchen vegetable scrap. But you can also recycle many other things, including paper, untreated wood, and cardboard. Um, cardboard paper, towel, and to toilet paper holders are great items to compost. So you can use compost around your plants to feed them, keep the weed down, and to also help maintain soil moisture. If you don't have a yard, you can give it away to family and friends that do. So your reward will be flowers, vegetables, or herbs from thankful gardeners. Yay! <laughs> Have you ever done any compost before in your life? No. Really? Uh, no. We, we are farmers. Oh, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to farming, anything agriculture, trust yeah. me, everything I learned about it, it was all in my secondary school days, and I have no knowledge about it anymore. Yeah. I wish uh, I could. Wow, that's nice. So what did you find for us in the news, Lamy? Okay, it's about this, the NCDC against the um, enemy and the, what's it called, the um, presidential tax first. Mm -hmm. I think they're bantering back and forth about the validity, the efficacy of the rapid test kit. And then this is directly linked with the number of people dying in hospitals because, actually not in hospitals, because quite a number of people are dying from diseases not related to COVID-19. Yeah. This is particularly because a lot of hospitals are rejecting patients. And trust me, Uwa, I do not blame them. Because our testing capacity in Nigeria is limited, particularly because of the testing time. Mm -hmm. So while a lot of, I've heard people waiting for their tests, that while waiting for their test, they died. So what the NMA is talking about is, why don't we do this rapid test as a first layer? We could conduct another one, but at least as a first aid, mm -hmm. so that if these are available, you can treat, even if it says, or even if it's, you're still going to double check, so that these people can receive treatment. Mm -hmm. So I think they should embrace the rapid. And I was, you know, I was, earlier on, I was asking of the origin of this rapid test kit, that if we know the origin, what's the statistics of the effectiveness in those countries? So we can use that to rely on if we're going to use it or not. I think is half bread is better than none. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying we should entirely rest, rely on it, but we can use it as a first layer. Absolutely. I even I, I listened to Dr. Um, Francis Fadilie, okay. the president of NMA, NMA, and he was saying that a lot of times what they have been faced with now as medical professionals is when when patients come into their hospitals to treat or not to yeah, treat. So they are not able to treat because first of all they have to do this test and doing this test sometimes. The test will take like five days for the results because, to come Uwa, back. Uwa. So it is difficult for it is difficult for them to, you know, to, to touch that patient patient. So they end up dying. You know, and so how many patients. patients can you test can you send your samples for tests? So you for know, every patient you have. Because don't forget that most of the symptoms, sultry, when I'm going to have malaria, the first symptom I have is sultry. Yeah. You know, I've been threatening to have salt fruit in the past few weeks. I just told, I said salt fruit, <laughs> better don't try it. Do you understand? <laughs> Body pain, cough and cough and, uh, and uh, cold and cough. These are my usual symptoms for malaria. So now it's you better it not come. <laughs> do you understand? So how do you decipher if it's malaria, if mm, it's typhoid, absolutely. or if it's COVID? Absolutely. And we this that's why the fact that they are medical practitioners, they hold their same also a sense of responsibility to keep to be alive. Mm. So I think it's just how to balance it. Yeah. And I think the balance should be the rapid test. Absolutely. Case. That's where where they should go to. So my story is actually quite interesting. Um, okay. On Twitter, um, today marked um, five years of um, our, our dear president, Muhammad Buhari. Do you know, Buhari, you know about it? I, I, that, <laughs> <laughs> that I voted for. So by the way, so if I'm talking about it, let it, let it not look like I'm coming from a biased um, point of view. Oh, you but voted, I voted twice. I, no, no, I only voted once the first time. Okay. Because the second time I had You were already disillusioned. No, no, no. I had issues with my voters card and for me to get it it didn't come out until you know so no, i'm that, still working no, on to it be, to be honest with you i did not vote in 20 
2015 I voted. I did not vote mm. because the whole process was very complicated. Oh. I was living in a particular area mm. and I'd already mm. moved. So it's, it's and then difficult. I asked, I said, why can't it be seamless? Yeah. I want to perform my civic obligation. It's even difficult. making it difficult. It's okay. difficult. I just so the national the chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Prince, um, Prince Uche Secondos, has mm. said that five years of President Muhammadu Buhari's administration was, the, was a waste. And of course, on Twitter, a lot of people took on... Um, the president on Twitter, and there's a hashtag um, trending, hashtag five years of disaster. Um, there's this young man called Henry Shield. I mean, he's always criticizing and all of that. He says, dear Muhammadu Buhari, we joined the world to congratulate you on your five years of disaster as president. May your kind never grace our national space again. So a lot of people are feeling so much disappointment, you know, from our president, you know, and I, I wouldn't really, really say that um, they are totally they are wrong. Point, they are yeah. out of point because, you know, places, I mean, in different, there are some specific things that had happened in our nation that we expected to see certain kinds of reaction from our president. And we didn't get like those kind of reactions the, and all of that. Like so during I, the outbreak of COVID-19. Do you understand? There are so many things that he should have strategically shown to us that come, I am here and I'm for everybody. And you know, you know the, the statement he made, I can never forget that statement. When oh. he was sworn in in 2015, I belong to nobody, I'm for, I'm everybody. for everybody. Everybody had high expectations. You know, yes. Everybody had expectations. Yes, everybody had high expectations. So we're hoping, you know, that, you know, and for, you know my for take me, on this issue, yeah, well, quickly. I personally think that there's nothing President Muhammad Buhari can do till the end of his tenure. Because I do not personally believe that he has the mental capacity and the physical capacity to carry out this task. So I think we're just going to wait it out till the end of his tenure. Wow. Eight years, that's a long time. Well, too bad. <laughs> All right, so let's focus on what we're talking about today. Sheon David on Namusi will join us right after the break to discuss millennials and, you know, and let's hear what he has to say about millennials and the pressure, the societal pressure. Stay with us, we'll be right back.